Thank you for joining us today. This is the overview video for the TricoScience Pro software user interface as well as the intro video to how to perform a trichoscopy study. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is launch the software application just by clicking this button. There are three main panels as you see here in the software interface. You have the patient database here and patient management tools at the bottom. In the middle you have perform studies. All these different types of studies that you can do with the TricoScience Pro software. And on the right side you have your tools and then reports and some other settings tools. So to get started we're going to click on the new patient button and we're going to enter the patient's name their sex and their racial background. Then you can click on outpatient card and this is where you enter more information such as their contact information and their age and height and weight and this information right here is uh, critical for the analysis so you want to make sure to fill that in because it gets saved into the software and is used for reporting later on. Other information is more optional. You have hair and scalp conditions and other medical conditions that you can add into the outpatient card as well. So now I'm going to go over the tools unique to Trico Science Pro software that allows you to achieve a trichoscopy study. I'm going to click this patient here and I'm going to load a previous session uh, that I've done to achieve a trichoscopy study. And just so you know, you're going to need a mouse with a scroll wheel on it to achieve these results. And I'll show you why in a moment. So I'm going to clear this off and then we're going to do this together. First feature I'm going to show you is the red wand, which is the semi-automatic detection mode. And this is a feature that's unique to Trico Science Pro. You can just scroll over the hair that you want to um, measure the thickness of, and it's just going to do that really easily. And occasionally there might be a blonde hair or a gray hair, or just a faint hair that's it's hard to see, and the semi-automatic detection mode won't capture it. And that's where the scroll wheel will come into play on your mouse. So you click on the manual detection mode button and then you're just going to highlight it, the hair, and then you use your scroll wheel to measure the thickness. And that looks about right. So I just click off. Another feature I'd like to show you is the follicular count mode. I can just go around and count follicles like that. There's also these different symbols that you can put down to indicate different things on the scalp. For instance, this yellow dot. I'm just going to put a few of these down so you get an idea of how those go. Another feature I'd like to show is the ruler. So you can just use that to measure lengths. Then there's the X's down here. The big X clears off all of your markings on the screen and the smaller X will clear off a particular field. So you wanted to clear just this field off, you can use the small X. Another feature I'd like to show is the select circle area tool and I can just use this to to zoom in, kind of clear off the rest of the picture just by clicking this button. And that allows me to focus on just this particular region. A lot of the rest of the tools are pretty self-explanatory, so I recommend reading the user manual to find out more about those. So once we've put down all of our markings and made all our measurements, you can click the chart button right here to run the report and measure the hair density. What you're seeing here, this blue line, is the normal mean hair density. This is the average. And this 
yellow field indicates the total hairs, the green is the terminal hairs, and the red is the vellus hairs. And there's all sorts of calculations here done on the hairs that you can look into as well. Over here on the right side is a hair diameter chart, which plots out all of the different hairs that we've measured. Each of these little red dots is one particular hair. For instance, this hair is 20 microns wide. This blue region up here represents the normal mean diameter for this hair type, which takes into account the patient's gender and racial background and other information. This yellow column indicates the mean diameter for all of the hairs. You can see it's at about 45 microns there, significantly below the normal mean diameter for that particular type of patient. So this concludes the video. Thank you for watching.